You're listening to Cards to the Moon, a podcast about trading cards from both a collector and investor perspective. We hope you'll stick around for the ride as we take a deep dive into the state of the hobby, share some hot takes, hopefully some useful advice and fun stories along the way. Hey guys, welcome back to Cards to the Moon. My name is Clark from Five Card Guys on Instagram at fivecardguys.com. With me co-hosting as usual is Hyung of Integrity Sports Cards. And this time, it's John who's away, but filling in for him. He's back three episodes in a row now, and we're glad to have him. It's our good friend Will. Welcome back. It's great to be back again, and it's great to finally be doing a podcast with Young. I know, it's been, I think, almost <laughs> a year yeah. since we, we did one together, but uh, great serious? to have you on, Will. Oh, wow. He's just a regular. It's okay. it's, it's 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 automatic, right? <laughs> it's, it's automatic. Getting to the my fans head. love him. <laughs> <laughs> love it. It's all good. Okay, so for the week of this recording, we just got the official release of this year's Top Series 1 Baseball. I know Will and I were able to crack a hobby box right before the recording, so we'll talk about our hits <laughs> and uh, about what I think has been a tremendous launch of this product in our next segment. But off the top, I wanted to quickly get your guys' thoughts on what PSA recently announced. And I know anything grading related kind of triggers Will, but let's let's try to discuss this anyway. Um, what PSA announced was that for cards with only the autographs authenticated, like the IP autos, they will now get a blue border label instead of the red border label that we're all used to seeing from PSA. So any initial thoughts on this? What do you guys think? Me personally, I don't I don't necessarily mind it. I think uh, uh, for me at least it's it's a I guess it really doesn't matter. Cuz I don't I don't think I would just get it. It's just the auto grade though, right? There's no uh, if it's grade the card's graded it's still um, a red label. This is just uh, strictly if it's you're grading the auto, right? Or is that it? I, I feel like if it's like an like a IP auto, it would right. be a blue just to make it. So even if you grade the clear. card, hmm. that's a good question, right? <laughs> well, well, then the you're, then well, the label know? is blue and red. <laughs> Red on the top half, <laughs> blue on the bottom. It's purple. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does remind me of kind of like the old school SGC labels, kind of. Which you guys are the green that. one? The green one? Yeah, the green labels. Mm. Like, I mean, it's not aesthetically pleasing by by any means. I'm not like, wow, I can't wait till I get IP autos. But like it is, I mean, I, I don't think it's bad. I think it differentiates kind of like uh, the regular PSA labels, but... It's a non-issue for me, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, I, li- I like the idea of it because you're you're trying to differentiate between a real auto. I mean, not a real auto. A on-card auto that's... Or not on-card auto. A auto from the manufacturer <laughs> versus, right. you know, an auto that you got at a trade show or card show or going on the game and getting it autographed. Um, I know we talked about it. I can't remember if we talked about it last week or in or offline about how some people will try to get like a red ink auto, and then like they'll they'll ask the player to sign with like a red pen, so it looks right. like the red ink auto from like Topps Heritage or whatever. Right. And then they try to pass it off like it's it's the one that everyone's chasing after. So I like that there's a little bit of differentiation. I don't care that it's blue. I don't care if it's red. I don't care about any of that because, as we all know, I don't care about the uh, the slab. I don't. I wish the slab <laughs> didn't exist. So the color, it, like, ooh, now we're gonna have color match blue. <laughs> like, like if you have a Blue Jays in person auto, now you got a color match blue <laughs> PSA label. Maybe it becomes more valuable. Hey, it's like, going to be a thing, quick, man. Quick question. Um, so I just quickly looked at some images, and it looks like the these are just when you grade the auto. Okay. Right. So not when you grade the card, it's still a red label, I believe, and it has an auto grade. This is this is when you just grade the auto. So it, it says like trading card, and then it's like gem mint ten or authentic auto, and then it doesn't say the the card name or anything like that. 
And then I also believe that um, what, weren't there blue labels before, like the old school PSA? Didn't they do this anyways? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at these images. Like I, I see old school PSA labels with the blue, the uh, the blue labels, uh, which they are authenticating, like the PSA DNA certified. If you look at old blue blue PSA labels, and then the new label looks very similar. So I don't know what the deal is. You know, I see uh, the new one. It says trading card, and then it's just the the what's it called the grade on the auto. Right. Right. That's what I see too. I, I the one quote I see is um, I think from PSA president Ryan Hoge. I think that's how you pronounce it. He says, in the coming months, we're going to introduce a new blue label for all collectibles PSA encapsulates where the only authentication or grading provided is for the autograph, which is what right. you just said. Okay. I guess like if, if you do get the card graded, so in your, in your scenario that you mentioned, Will, like a Topps Heritage, red ink, you know, you tell Juan Soto to sign it red ink <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> You know, but you still get the card graded. It'll still be a red border, I guess, right? right? Yeah, that's what I think. Okay, I concluded so that I, we could be cause... wrong, but <laughs> okay. we'll I have to that's... fact check ourselves in the next, <laughs> next episode. episode. Yeah, yeah. But I see what you're saying, Hyung. I googled it, and they did have. It says before the change in 2019. So somebody asked, "What's the PSA DNA blue label?" And it says, before the change in 2019, blue labels were used to indicate that a card had gone through the PSA DNA authentication service. Right. So it looks like that's what they used to do. Yeah, they have old blue labels. And then they switched it to red. And then maybe they brought it back. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we need a fact checker on oh, this. We need, we need to dig deeper. All right. We'll hire a fact checker. You know, <laughs> Our, our our podcast is getting big enough <laughs> that we can look into this. Anyway, interesting. Um, Learn something new, and uh, I guess I you know the, generally the the reception has been positive. You know, making things clearer is always a good thing. So uh, there's one point for PSA. All right, good job. Let's PSA. move on. Good job. <laughs> Let's move on to hobby headlines. Okay, so like we teased at the top of the show, the 2024 Top Series 1 baseball set is now out. I've watched a bunch of breaks online, saw some cool hits. Now, maybe it's just me, but I feel like there's a bit more excitement in the release of Top Series 1 baseball this year. And I think it's in large part, um, it has to do with Fanatic's marketing of the product. So we'll actually talk about that more in depth in a sec. But first... Like I said, also at the top, Will, you and I were able to crack open a box, a hobby box of Top Series 1. Uh, did you get any hits after cracking your box? And um, if you did, what is it? And, and afterwards, tell us your initial thoughts on Top Series 1 this year. Yeah, so uh, a little behind the scenes earlier this afternoon, I dropped by Clark's place because I bought two hobby boxes and uh, he wanted one of them. So I said, "You pick," and he didn't want to pick because he knows how bad how bad I am at picking, and uh, I know how bad I am at picking. So I made him pick, and he somehow got the relic, and I got the auto. So that was a win. But then uh, my auto is a uh, Max Muncy, just like base autograph. So it's like a veteran autograph, and um, he got a relic. And I'm sure Clark will talk about his relic, but. Uh, or we'll talk about relics later, but um, it looks like a lot of the relics for this year are actual game used. So yep. so now, I wish I got the relic. I'm always, <laughs> Every episode that I'm on, I'm talking about how I only hit the relics and I never get the auto. And now I'm like regretting it because my auto is so terrible. Um, and then no other, no, no other hits of any, any like substance. Oh, I got like this. Bob Feller insert. I don't know if you guys know Bob Feller. Oh, young. Oh yeah. Oh, Bob yeah. Feller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like some out <laughs> of three hundred parallel insert. Yeah, like yeah. some useless papers. Papers are tough to pull numbered stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. So there wasn't a lot of hits, um, but yeah, 
I guess we'll talk. We'll talk about the things that we like after, right? Or Clark, do you want to talk about? Yeah, what we you can do hit? that. Well, <laughs> sure. Yeah. What were your? I hits? Mean, <laughs> it was that relic card which uh, should have went to Will, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did get a Spencer Torkelson game used bat relic oh, nice. card. Yep, it's worth four dollars, three dollars ninety nine. I saw last <laughs> sell, sale. Sell, so, sell now. It's gonna go down as quick as you can. Yeah. <laughs> this is the year for Spencer, boys. Come on. Oh, you yeah. know we've been waiting for so long. Torkelson, you know, mash. He's gonna mash fifty homers for the Tigers. Um, <laughs> but I guess it doesn't really matter, right? Game used relic cards are still not that valuable, <laughs> and, and there is a bunch. Um, you know, when I saw a bunch of. Uh, you know, box breaks, case breaks. There's a lot of relic cards, so you gotta ex- expect that. And uh, we talked about this last episode. We thought, you know, is it still one auto, one relic, or one auto or relic? And, and it seems to be the case. It is an auto or relic for hobbies. For the hobby box. Yeah. Yes. And the jumbo is a guaranteed two autos, or I think yeah, guaranteed is that... one auto and two relics, wasn't it? Oh, was it something like that? Something oh, like that. Geez. I don't know. I could. Yeah. I could be. T- like we need a fact, fact checker, <laughs> John. John, can you, can you check John. on that? <laughs> yeah, well, we'll message John after this recording, <laughs> and then yeah, hopefully he can do that for us. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it was a relic. Uh, you know, I was kind of joking before off air that my best hit was the unscratched home run challenge card, <laughs> nice. Ali de la Cruz. Nice. Oh, nice. Maybe. Yeah. So I just got to get the game right. Where Ali de la, de la Cruz is going to hit that homer, and uh, I, I read the fine print. So new this year, I believe, is that um, well, what's same is if you guess the game that he hits a home run in, then you get a special parallel card of that day, I guess. And I, I have won one before. I've won the Nelson Cruz home run challenge card, which was number two, I think seventy six, because seventy six other people guessed it. Um, guessed the date right. Yeah, right. yeah. So I guess that's similar. But what's different this year is. You can double down, okay? You could double or nothing. And you could get a special parallel card if you um, think that the home run he hits that day is right, and also it goes more than four hundred twenty-five yards. Feet. I think. I, I think. I think feet. it was. Sorry, uh, sorry, feet, it was. Yeah. Uh, that was last year too, or the home yeah. Run they had that last year. year. Oh, was that yeah. it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't but know. But so. yeah, like. Um, Thanks for fact checking. Thanks for. Fact I, I, there you I, go. I, I we got one, one fact checking. <laughs> <laughs> But I, but I hope okay. on on those uh, cards, those redemption or home run challenge cards. I I just hope that Fanatics does a better job with those because you've you said you had the Nelson Cruz one, right? Like it wasn't the greatest looking card, was it? It's worse than Tops it now. It almost reminded me of like a. <laughs> it was like a, almost like a Tops black. It was weird. You know what I mean? Like uh, a Tops black base card, and as as a serial, small serial number, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't fantastic or anything. But yeah, they're th- those yeah. Uh, cards are still high in demand. I remember uh, when Judge hit, uh, you know, sixty two. Um, Ooh, he was. Uh, yeah, but everybody was like hyped that you know they're getting a card and they get the card. I'm just like, that card's ugly. <laughs> like that card <laughs> sucks. You know. So hopefully, hopefully they do a better job with kind of like stuff like that, where you know the prize that are being redeemed. You know they have. You know, better better designs that make it feel a little more, you know, rewarding for all that yeah. work. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm just looking at like last year's home run challenge. So Bo Bichette, and then in the background is like it says winner, 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 winner. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. That terrible. One, yeah, yeah, that looks bad. Okay, so I'm not as excited anymore, but we'll see. Uh, maybe this is the year fanatics. And uh, I don't know, maybe this is a good way to segue into this uh, topic of Top Series 1. You were just mentioning, Will, like the base cards even look a lot more impressive than I initially thought myself even as well. But yeah, yeah, yeah. let me share some things that I, I've I've really enjoyed about this year's set. First off, the base card. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's It's got hollow, like the lines around the edges, the border. It's actually like holographic so it pops off the card and like the team name and like just like some other stuff it, it has that hollow foil like the tops logo does so when it i does. opened my first pack i was like whoa 
did I hit a god pack? Like, what is this special? <laughs> what is this special pack? And then I realized, oh, that's just the base card. And that just yeah. goes to show, I, Hyung was saying it offline, like, Fanatics is doing a great job with the production of these cards because that just goes to show I expected so little from these paper cards right. that just seeing a little bit of holographic foil on each card just blew me away. So I love that. Um, I've watched a ton of rips as well, just like you, Clark. I love yeah. the t- team color variation, even though it's un- not numbered. It's a really pretty looking card. I saw that vintage stock. Is actual stock. it's actual vintage stock now. Yeah. So I think it's like more that tops hair was it high number heritage like that kind oh, of stock. It's, yeah, it's a thicker stock. Um, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, they tops tops vintage stock did have like a similar stock, but it it's not as nice. I would say but as, it didn't look like it. Yeah. It didn't feel like it because yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Did you so pull one? I like that? Huh? You didn't pull one though, right? No, I did, I vintage. pulled a. My my color pull was a gold, which is like uh, I'll like talk about gold a little bit later. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The foils, like all the foils, look amazing. Like they they pop off the the card. I really like the HFA, the home field advantage mm. insert sure. set, Clark. I think you have to collect twenty twenty four. They yeah. look really good, and uh, but yeah, like Kyung, like you were saying, I, I got a gold insert or a gold parallel and. They have to do something about gold. I, There's the I don't old know school why. golds, right? Yeah, it's a brown. Like just, it's like a brown color. Just flip gold foil and gold. Like yeah, gold foil looks so nice. Yeah. That it doesn't make sense that that's not like one of the top parallels to chase. It is yeah. one of the prettiest Ooh. looking parallels. So, yeah. And the regular gold is just terrible it's brown. but they i i think i think it's it's the classicness of kind of like that flat gold like if you look at a 2011 tops update trout the gold is kind of like a flat gold it's not the shiny ones um they had right. shiny golds before like a foil golds but they're kind of like looked down upon i guess but really? i like them yeah i like them yeah. like i think it's so... I, yeah it's like when I was in grade five or six, I had like a science fair project and I was doing some MS, Microsoft Paint or, or Photoshop or something. And I had made this title page that was like had gold. And I thought, oh, it really looks nice, like on my screen. And then I printed it on my crappy printer. <laughs> and obviously that gold color doesn't translate to my printer. And it just ended up looking like brown. And that's the exact same feeling I get when I look at these stupid right. gold. Very underwhelming. 2024. Yeah, it's so oh, yeah. underwhelming. I'm a little disappointed to hear that because, you know, we're just talking about the base card and how it's kind of elevated a little bit, right? And yeah. I thought, oh, maybe the parallels. And um, yeah, so I'm a little disappointed to hear that. Even like I saw on Twitter or X, um, someone pulled a one of one platinum. And it looks like your yeah. typical typical gray. Yeah, oh, yeah. platinums. So I was hoping that's why platinums need need a little, you know, a little makeover. <laughs> platinums too. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was <laughs> hoping they they do something with that because you know it might chase for, um, you know, Ryu Hyunjin, like cards that are just not valuable at all. Like I've got a few platinum Ryu Hyunjin cards, and they just don't pop. They don't. They just look gray. Yeah. 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 Well, but overall I love I love the set. I'm gonna rip way too much of it. <laughs> well, you got one more hobby box, right? So I'm trying not to. <laughs> I might pick up a couple blasters, we'll see. Yeah, I think I think I might do that. But uh, I, I got the the what I got a Shohei card is the blueprint insert. Oh nice. Well, um, I love it that. It's pretty insert. cool. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Not worth much, but it uh I like that. That insert this year, which is which I believe is new for this this yeah. uh, set, so uh, that's kind of cool. Okay, uh, I always I said this before. I wanted to talk about the marketing of Top Series One this year, and uh, Hyung, you and I, we always talk about like, wow, they're really stepping it up, and we've given them their kudos before. But um, let's talk about some of the campaigns we've already seen, and maybe we could talk about whether you think that's been impactful in. I don't know, getting heads turned or at least even old school and new collectors excited about top series one. And, and just generally, you know, 
almost like, you know, after seeing the Super Bowl commercials, it's like, oh, which one kind of stood out to you? So it'll be kind of cool to kind of revisit some of the, some of the campaigns. So the first one I want to talk about is J-Rod. Remember when he was congratulating Ronald Acuna Jr. for being on the cover of this year's Top Series 1 box? J-Rod was obviously the cover guy on last year's Top Series 1. <laughs> what do you guys think of that, um, that commercial, I guess? I, th- I think Fanatics is doing it right. Like I said, it's uh, in this day and age, it's the way you market yourself and the way you use uh, your social media channels. And, you know, that they, they do this intentionally. They have the relationships that Tops really didn't have with these big time, big time players. And, you know, it, the way it's going is, you know, at the end of the day, they're doing these collabs, J-Rod, Acuna, and then millions and millions of people are seeing it. You know, um, it's in front of, you know, celebrities. It's in, it's their cross sports. Now you have a lot more collectors that are, you know, athletes as well. So, you know, it's a good timing. Fanatics is doing a great job uh, with whatever connections they have. They just basically amplified it, um, you know, by a hundred times of what the old Tops brand, you know, had. Right. And that was kind of our speculation going into this, even though even the way they marketed 2024, uh, the, the product packaging, you know, things were different. Even, uh, you guys mentioned like, uh, game used relics, um, uh, you know, stuff like that, where Fanatics has a lot more resources to, you know, uh, make the user experience a lot better. Right. So for me, I'm, you know, I, I follow along the marketing probably more than, you know, even card collecting itself, just because it's right in front of my face every single day. So being in marketing, it's it's it stands out a lot of how they're handling it and how they're doing it, and they're doing it exactly like we said they were gonna do it. They're they have campaigns that are way bigger than uh, Tops have has ever kind of like produced. Yeah, they're executing. That's for sure. Do you like that commercial? Do you like that campaign? Will Did you know you what? It? I I didn't get to see that commercial. Oh, yet. Where okay. where was it? Um... Like where I mean, did it was you on see Instagram, it from? Yeah, just from everything like the card, on social media, just on the different yeah. card accounts and whatever. So that's my thing. Like, I feel like um, I wonder how much penetration they're getting into the general market with these commercials. Because like, where are these commercials being shown? I don't watch traditional TV, and I don't know if I should say this, but I have a YouTube ad blocker, so I never see ads on YouTube. <laughs> oh no, I mean I pay for YouTube Premium, so I. <laughs> don't see ads so i'm just wondering where i wouldn't these ads call them com- more up. commercials they were so the way they they would do it is like because acuna is a celebrity J rod's a celebrity um they all have their own channels with millions of followers so they would oh, do I a see, collab see. with tops on their social channels and then they they would be in front of millions and millions of people uh pushing tops and fanatics products but then it's on Acuna's channel. So if you're like a super Acuna fan, right, yeah. you're now getting Tops marketing right, you know, in front of you too, in front of Acuna. Yeah, Whereas yeah. before, that never really happened, right? Yeah. Well, last week, it's true. Clark was saying was telling us about um, this Michael Harris video where he's at a card show, right? And he's just pretending to. He's just looking it's for like Michael Harris. It's like that Kyrie cards. Irving, or uh, yeah. you know the. The old Uncle uh, Drew, Uncle Drew, Uncle, yeah, Uncle yeah. Drew, yeah, yeah. yeah. turned it into a whole, <laughs> turned it into a whole movie, <laughs> turned it into a revenue stream. Like it's amazing, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, that's true. It's, it's less commercials, more marketing campaigns. Got different it. Campaigns, got it. yeah, yeah. So, what I liked about the J Rod congratulating Cunha is like, it, it gave me the same vibes as like you know when you're on the cover of Sports Illustrated. It was a big mm. deal, right? And now it's like that. they're trying to make it like, oh, if you're on the cover of Tops or or even EA Sports. Yeah, the, it's like uh, a video game cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. MLB The Show. Yeah, exactly, right? Or uh, yeah. NHL, whatever, you know? So it's kind of like, oh, this is another – for athletes, it's like uh, it's another accomplishment. But, you know, um, it, there's more prestige to the, to the product itself as well, just being on Makes the cover. Sense. So I liked how they're trying to do that a little bit, even if it wasn't – um, purposely, but it seems like, you know, fanatics marketing, there seems to be a purpose to everything they do. So, um, yeah, so that's, that was, uh, one of the earlier ones I saw. Uh, the other one, uh, recently, more recently is Mike Trout opening first pack. So I like, you know, how 
they're getting a lot of these other players um, involved in the hobby. We already knew Mike Trout was a collector or got back into collecting and um, obviously leveraging one of the biggest stars of the game still um, for this year's set is pretty cool to see. Um, and even the Let It Rip campaigns, like just having that tagline, you know, it might sound cheesy to some, but you know, when, when, it's, when something's that cheesy, it just sticks in your mind, right? right. Let it rip. No, I like and, it. I like that tag. That's good. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I just, I just see so much more like marketing going towards non collectors. You know what I mean? Right. And it's just they're coming in bunches. Like some, I guarantee you, there's some people uh, new into the hobby. Maybe they're listening to this podcast for the first time. They've opened their first ever rip they don't know what it's like to rip uh you know pre fanatics tops products it it was just as you know skunked but you know it's just a little <laughs> better experience i would think <laughs> true and even for long time collectors um, that reminds me of another campaign which was from rookies to vets i don't know if you saw that campaign where uh they showed like someone like freddie freeman his 20 20- um, 11 rookie card or whatever his rookie card was and then to his 2024 top series one rookie card like to right. see the, the the difference between the rookie year and mm. and the card this year like how much a lot of these vets have grown um, right. that's kind of cool to see because it also entices i think like not just baseball card collectors but baseball fans in general who might want to hey this is kind of cool just that nostalgia factor again yeah I don't know. Is there anything else that you were impressed by in terms of the marketing or what uh, Fanatics has done well, to that, lead up to Well, going back to uh, when Will said the whole Michael Harris deal, if you go back to why I thought that was a genius mar- marketing campaign is, you know, that's what people want to see is like they want to see celebrities actually, you know, doing stuff in the hobby, but like do it in a way where it's entertaining, it's funny. Um, and sure. you know, if, if you're part of that hobby, that that's an exciting day. Whoever, you know, was dealing with Michael Harris at that <laughs> right. moment, yeah, yeah. that's pretty yeah. cool. That's a pretty cool moment that is probably going to be unforgettable as a, you know, card collector. Right. So I like what they're doing with that. They could do so much within that context of involving players in these campaigns. And I'm telling you, this is what sells or this is what leads to sa- sales. Right. So it's like the yeah. marketing, um, and we say always on the pod that, you know, attention is the new currency and it's just a way of, you know, getting in front of millions and millions and millions of people. Like they said, if they, if let's just say tops was getting in front of two to 3 million people, you know, fanatics is getting in front of 20 to 50 million people now. Right. So it's like, it's such a different context of what fanatics brings to the table. And this is what I'm excited about. They just scratched the surface. This is their first release really right and then you know you look at the potential that they have you know we uh, we talk about that um earlier on this uh as well the the kevin hart um deal with i don't know if you're gonna bring it up yeah bring it up or uh, before but apparently there's uh these kevin hart ssps with him floating (laughs) around and it's like numbered out of 52 because he's five for two or something like that (laughs) which i think is a is a genius marketing <laughs> stunt if it's if if that's the case, right? Like that's hilarious. Like I think there's so much more utility in that. That never existed, and now you're involving like a full blown celebrity that has millions and millions of reach involved in, you know, this marketing campaign of you know 2024 series one. So stuff like that, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yep. Definitely is working on me because um, even after getting skunked on that first hobby box, You're I, gonna buy I know one. I'm going to buy more. Oh, yeah. 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 Know. yeah. yeah. Uh. <laughs> we could go case. But, we can get a case next yeah. time, Clark. I'm telling yeah. you. And, and, and those that have their MVP buyback, right. send it off now. Get that credit and put it towards, oh, yeah, yeah. Put it towards yeah. a case. This year's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, well done, Fanatics. And uh, yeah, like you, you kind of you're alluding to, Hyun. Can you imagine like when the bigger product launches come up for this oh, year? Like what Topps the Chrome, marketing I will think, be around that? I think Topps Chrome is oh, going to be phenomenal be... this year because you got to remember Jackson Holiday is probably going to maybe be in Series 2. Jackson Ooh. Churio probably Series 2. So that means they're going to be in Topps Chrome. So I th- And w- 
along with series one, I thought series one had pretty decent rookies in it. Series you know? one has decent rookies. Decent yeah. rookies. Yeah. yeah. Like you, you just never know with, with that class. And then on top of that, you're going to get the call ups in series two and, you know, hopefully it bleeds into tops Chrome. So I think it's going to be an exciting year for baseball collectors. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when Bowman Chrome comes out and yeah, like yes. maybe, will... maybe tops dynasty will get proper respect. You know, like if, the, if John was here, it'd be like, "Yeah, why, why isn't Topps Dynasty getting <laughs> getting the love, hobby love that it should?" Yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of potential for upcoming products, and only only downside is I'm going to be spending a lot more money than I did even last year just on <laughs> ripping wax. So. Which means Fanax is doing great. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? It's, They've taken if, more if, money out of our wallets. Yeah. <laughs> if we take this small sample size between the three of us, yeah, they're going to 10x in no no time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Looking forward to what else is coming up in 2024, and uh, we'll definitely update everyone on this podcast. Okay, let's go on to our next segment. It's called overrated, underrated. All right, we've done this before, but we haven't done it in a while. But I'm just going to go over a few list of hobby-related things. And the theme this year, no surprise, is 2024 Top Series 1. All right? So there's going to be 2024 Top Series 1. Most of them are kind of insert-related. And I want you guys to say, do you think they're overrated or underrated? Okay? And because you already brought it up, Young, the mini Kevin Hart SSP cards Number to fifty two. I don't know if it's true that it's, be- it's number to fifty two because he's five foot two. That would be hilarious. <laughs> but they- but uh, because he is from Philadelphia, those uh, SSP cards are on base Philly cards only. Mm. Philadelphia oh. Phillies cards only. So there's that connection too to Kevin Hart as well. So what do you guys think? Overrated or underrated? Oh, man, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say definitely not overrated because. This is what this is why I like what Fanatics is doing. Like I said before, it's 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 doing things differently. If you have the leverage of relationships, you have access to Kevin Hart. Maybe you know there's utility behind it. We've seen it a little bit with the Taco Fractor, although Ooh, that wasn't yeah. as as like I guess well executed as we thought. Maybe the old Tops guy was still there, but like. Um, <laughs> But, it was an uh, old contract. <laughs> it was an old contract. They're like, damn it, we gotta run it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, if if there's like utility on on, let's just say the Kevin Hart, I think that's that's pretty cool. Like even even though even if he's involved somehow, right? So I think it's underrated. Um, okay. Yeah. Super super underrated. I I love that it's just for Philly cards because then it makes sense. Yeah. Like. If it was for every base card, oh, like Drake. it wouldn't make sense. Yeah, and then it's making me wonder, like, <laughs> yeah. maybe there's some other... We don't know. Maybe there's some other secret, like, super, super, super short prints that are still being revealed. I don't know. That's true. But, right, uh, right. Yeah. but yeah, super underrated. And uh, I think, like, like, Kevin Hart is one of the biggest celebrities in the world today, right? Like, he is so beloved by everyone except for cat williams so like <laughs> this is great this is great like more eyeballs yeah. yeah i love it too really underrated and and like you mentioned like it wasn't announced right like it was one of those yeah. things that people started to discover on their own so that's kind of cool and um yeah you know can you imagine getting one of these cards and then if you could happen to get an autograph by kevin hart that'd be you know next next level so but that's uh, a PSA blue label, then. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> unless, unless you get the card, of the, you know, uh, graded as well, that that it's a red. But um, <laughs> all right, next on the list. So the golden mirror SSP cards are back for for this year as well. But the main difference is uh, instead of having the gold like embossed SSP like it was last year, the whole back of the card is gold. So this year's golden mirror. SSP variation cards, overrated or underrated? Mm -hmm. This one's tough because I don't think it's necessarily underrated, but I do like the change. Um, I I think it stands out uh, from a regular base card. You don't have to look at, well, if you're used to it, you know what like the base card would look like and then kind of like the SSP version, 
But a lot of people have to look at that small number, you know, with a magnifying glass to see if it's an SSP or not. So now it's a yeah. distinguishable kind of like physical, like characteristic of that card that stands out. And it kind of reminds me of the old Donruss uh, cards, like 88, 89 oh. Donruss, the back of the card. So it kind of brought that right. nostalgia a little bit, uh, just on me at least. So I, I, I like it. So I'm going to say underrated. I didn't like the SSP uh, labeled last last year? last year. Yeah, I just think SSP is like overrated itself. That word SSP. Yeah, right? yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I I I love. I mean, I loved last year's card because it it said SSP, so you knew it was something right. different. Right. But I get what Hyung's saying about like that word that that word is so overused. But just having the whole back gold, it, it makes me want to rip more just so I can hit one. Yeah. Um, you know, last year I was really lucky. I, I hit a Blue Jays Golden Mirror oh, variation on my yeah. first box. Oh, wow. So, That's crazy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's super underrated. For the same reasons, I think it's an underrated play. I love the look of it. Um, I wonder, though, if it's like an actual gold back or does it look brown as well it looks no brown. it looks so cool really does it look brown oh, I, it looked look orangey <laughs> let me let me take a look at this uh, yeah, so, look at this so uh, it might be overrated if it looks brown but if it looks more cool <laughs> like i love it love it then it'll be underrated but um it's it's funny right like the progression of like what we're so used to from tops um before you know like oh this the the embossed SSP is amazing because now we don't have to look at the small code code numbers, you know, and and now it's it's for, gone from there to a completely uh, quote unquote gold back, which is even easier to identify, you know. So it does make it even more quickly to uh, <laughs> or when I was opening the uh, hobby box, you do find more quickly that uh, you got you nothing. Really got nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, hey, I, you know. It, it it looks like I'm telling you, it looks like 1989 Donruss, the back of Donruss. Yeah. That's what I, I thought. I remember it that. Like. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember that. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I don't think it's golden though. I think it's uh, it's I, it's a tint pictures, of. I think the pictures don't do it justice. The Maybe I, saw, I gotta watch one a one video. Of the photos. I watched a break. Yeah, it kind of looked gold. Kind of looked gold to it me. Kind of looked. It kind of looked like it had some shine on it. Really? I'm hopeful. Ooh, I'm if it hopeful. had a bit of shine, oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be yeah. nice. Okay, <laughs> next one on the list: true photo variation. So we did talk about this briefly in a previous podcast, but this is essentially the same card, but the parallel is you strip away all the design aspect of the of the base card. So it's just like the photo with the tops, a small tops brand logo on it. I I love the idea. Um, I've seen a couple being being pulled. I think yep. I don't want to say it's overrated because I do like it, but I think it's un- a little underwhelming from what I would have thought it would be. So when I seen them pulled, like they're nice, they have a stadium club feel to it uh, a little bit, and even like yeah. kind of like a more of a vintage. Uh, I forgot what what sets, but like they're it, it looks kind of like. Um, it's different. I I like the idea. Um, I'm not as excited as I thought I would be when I seen one, if that makes sense. So I'm going to say does. slightly overrated, just slightly, but I do like them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I echo Hyung's statements exactly. The crazy thing is when I saw this year's um, card when they released the like preview image for this year's set and we saw the borders that gradient the black to white gradient i was like oh i don't know about that and then when they said oh there's going to be this photo variation where it's the full color a uh, full picture i was like like young saying it's like oh that's a really cool idea i like that but then when you see it you're like i kind of wish it had a border <laughs> <laughs> Like I kind of wish yeah. the gradient was there, so it's it's kind of wild. Like there's something missing. I think it's because I'm used to like having some stadium club cards where there's at least some 
foil and hollow and something on that card. Um, but yeah, something's missing. So a little bit, yeah, underrated idea, overrated in terms of its execution and what it lo- actually ended up looking like. Once yeah. we pull it, no, we're going to be like, these are the best things ever. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so funny you say that because I, I I wanted to hear your guys' thoughts first, but I feel the exact same way. When I saw it, it looked just a little plain. Yeah, like it looked a little boring and plain, and it's like it's like a a wallet size photo. Of, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like oh, that's kind of cool, I guess. But you know, I don't want to collect it. Yeah. Right? yeah. So so um, love the concept, like you said, Young and Will, but. Yeah, what I saw, it's like, eh, yeah, I'd rather have the border as well. All right, so that's overrated sweep. Okay, I got a couple more, and then you could add a couple inserts if you want to, to if you want to discuss further. But uh, you brought this up already, Will. Team Color SSP. Hmm. <sighs> and for those that don't know about the Team Color, it's um, Team Color, obviously, but then it also has a logo around. of your team. Yeah, yeah. It's a cool looking card. So the first time we brought this up in a previous episode, I was like, I don't, I don't love it. But then it, I seen it and I was like, oh, it looks really, actually really cool. Yeah. And I think I'm going to say it's slightly overrated, although I like it. But then it goes back to like, like classic it's it's a good collector's piece but it like if if you were to give me like an independence day or a black i would be like wow like that's that's the real true parallel of of flagship and i do like the cards like i think i would like them more if they were even more rare so i don't mm. i i think they're too there's too many out there like i seen a ellie de la cruz one and then you know like there's already like 10 up on ebay so it just shows you kind of like scarcity. And then I was watching a couple breaks, you know, people are maybe pulled, you know, two of them in the, in two boxes in a row. So they're not as rare as I thought they would be. So I'm going to be slightly overrated, but that doesn't mean I don't like, them. I still like the card. Um, just like how I thought before they look, they look great. They're a great looking card, but I'm going to say overrated. Yeah. Kind of the same way, like underrated idea. Uh, overrated in the final look, and and I love the card, but you know what was interesting is when I was opening the packs, um, uh, like for example the Colorado Rockies, their the borders on their card or like the hollow parts of their cards have that purple hollow, so it matches the their team colors. So I feel like man, they they did a good job of that matching those border lines, those neon lines to the team color. And it just goes to show, like, wow, they could do a lot with team color to make it look really good. I wish, I just wish it was numbered. I, I like how I'm saying, I, this should be, like, one of the hits. You elevate it to, like, one of those top-level parallels. You know, I think I think that'd be cool. I don't, I don't know why they didn't number it. Like, why do you have a out of 999, like, blue ice or whatever it is? Like... <laughs> Yeah, just make team colors, team color parallel and number it. That'd be a hit. Like, people would be chasing after that like crazy. Yeah. Um, oh, man, when I when I first saw it, when you're mentioning Hyung, like, when we first discussed it, I don't know. I wasn't, I thought it was too gimmicky. But then, I don't know if it's, if it's because I saw the base card, like Will was mentioning. I was, like, kind of really impressed by the stock and the paper look of this year's top series one. I'm like, if I saw it, I'd be like, this is cool. Like, it, this looks really nice. So, and you know, the solid team color around the board. I'm looking at some of the sales that have uh, already happened. And, and with the, you know, the foil around the, the team name. And I think it looks sharp. So I, I'm going the other way. I think it's slightly underrated. I went from thinking it was gimmicky to like, I think this would be um, a really cool thing to collect. If you, if you Clark, can. you convinced me. I'm I'm back on I'm on your side. You know why? Because <laughs> I'm realizing I'm realizing some of these inserts and some of these cards, like we have to see them in person. Because I was so yes. impressed with the base card and right. with the yeah. hollows so far. Exactly. Like 
what if that team color that that team variation just looks amazing like the independence day like young i know you know young young's got the monster of all monster independence day cards Um, uh, and like id but was it 2018 2018 2019 is great 2020 yeah. downhill, 2021 downhill. 20 yeah, those are all the ones I have. The 2020 <laughs> to 2022. But like this one, like just from photos, it looks good. I'm really curious what what the Independence Day looks like in person. So, yeah, that'll be good to see. All right, uh, well, that's a uh, that's a good segue into the last one I had. It's Independence Day um, card, but the serial number is 17. Out of seventy six, if you get it, seventeen seventy six. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love it. Overrated or underrated? Oh, man, it's like a jersey number match concept, but uh, it's it's, a, it's, it's out the... there. I know in the <laughs> hobby, there's there's people that specifically look for seventeen out of seventy six. So it's a thing, and if it's a Shohei seventeen seventy six, then it's even better, right? So I think it's underrated. I love little plays like that. You know, not it's not for everybody's <laughs> cup of tea, which is great. I think that's fine, but I like, like for instance, one of my favorite PC cards um, uh, is this Aaron Judge Topps Chrome SP I got, I pulled, and it's a green refractor, 99 out of 99. I think that's the coolest thing ever. Like right. the fact that I pulled it and it graded at SGC 10, it's kind of like the same thing I see this 17, if I were to pull an Independence Day that said 17 out of 76. And especially if it was jersey numbered, then it would be even more special. But I think Ooh. that in general, <laughs> like those, those are the 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 plays that I really like. So I'm gonna say underrated. Um, I think Independence Day parallels are overrated, to be honest. But uh, underrated <laughs> on the 1776 play. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Interesting. maybe it's because we're not Americans, but. Uh... It never crossed my mind. Seventeen seventy six, like, <laughs> right. like I get, like I, I knew why it was out of seventy six, but I just never thought, oh, you know, it'd be cool if you get the seventeen out of seventy six, like that. I like that idea. That's a pretty cool. That's pretty cool, and like I get why people would want to well, collect that right. one. Why, why people value that one? Yeah, right. yeah. Underrated, For sure. Underrated. <laughs> Definitely underrated sweep. I'm, I'm not a big fan of jersey number match cards. Because unless it's like uh, number to ninety nine at the very least, because then you know it feels number to ten, like a Panini Gold parallel, right. or you know, like then then only a few people get number match. Yeah. You know, like, how about if my number rare. was eleven? Yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 kind of dumb that way. But you know, if it's up to ninety nine, yeah, then you know everyone gets a shot at getting a jersey number match. But this one in seventeen seventy six, like it just. It, I just think it's cool the year and everything else, right? So, makes total sense to me. Um, I I only brought this up because I saw it on on social media as well. Um, someone hitting that, and and I thought, oh, that's kind of neat. That's kind of cool. And I didn't even think about it until until I saw that post. So, definitely underrated play. Um, would you pay a premium for it? I wouldn't pay a premium, but I would appreciate it if I pulled it a lot more i would i would charge a premium (laughs) i would pay a premium i'd charge a premium but i if if it was uh, someone like otani like a otani independence day in 2018 like and it's 1776 there's only two out there of the vertical pitching and his uh, red jersey so for me that's like super super collectible right so it's like jersey number plus it's yeah. it's the Independence it's Day. It's almost right? like a perfect storm of it's a per- like, yeah. all those little things. <laughs> you, could, you could have a PSA seven, and you, I'd be happy with it. <laughs> That's true. I, I I totally didn't even think of that Shohei Otani at seventeen as the number. Yeah. But um, other people with seventeen as a number, just uh, if you want, if you're curious, uh, Jose Barrios for our Blue Jays fans. Um, Pass. <laughs> Reese Hoskins, <laughs> yeah, no one, no one huge. Chris Bryant, all right. Shohei's definitely the number one guy on this list. <laughs> Mitch Hanniger, <laughs> yeah, the Shohei seventeen seventy six ID card will be amazing. All right, there's your round of overrated, underrated for this uh, for this show. 
All right, let's finish off our episode with our regular weekly segment we call Pick One. And this is where each of us, we choose two cards or two players, and then we debate which one we would rather invest in. So Hyun is back, so do you want to do the others and start things off? Okay, I'm going to stick with the 2024 th- uh, like the theme that we've, we've been going at. And since you guys uh, opened up some hobby boxes, would you rather two hobby boxes or a jumbo box? Oh, easy. I know now. Now I know your answers, like uh, based on your results. But let's just say, <laughs> let's just say you guys had this hobby box and you didn't open it. Okay, okay. And, and or it, maybe that hobby box was was a, was great for you, right? Because I know some people swear by hobby, and some people think jumbo's super overrated. There's people that calculate even retail, like uh, retail's better odds than like jumbo and hobby. I don't know if that's true, oh, okay. but. You know, oh, there, I was there I, I was banging that drum for a while in our group chat about ripping, ripping uh, retail just because yeah. Uh, yeah you get you get a lot more of these parallels yeah but uh, what I realized is you end up with thousands upon thousands of base cards and <laughs> I just look at them and I'm like it's like nothing but regret like I look at my basement like drawer I'm like. <laughs> Oh my god, how much <laughs> how many hanger boxes did you rip, you loser, you <laughs> idiot. So I used to be like that, but I, I switched over to opening only uh hobby or jumbo. Uh, for me, I actually prefer opening hobby because uh you can get the clear. All right. Yeah. I love right, that right, parallel. Right. Tops clear, yeah. Acetate so I love, out of ten. I love the out of ten clear. So I, I, uh, I like hobby for that. I know that you don't get the guaranteed auto, so that's kind of scary. But the price point on hobby is usually a little bit like two hobbies is less than one jumbo. And for me, ripping jumbo is not fun. I don't like the big packs. I like. I like the hobby because it's usually like twenty four packs, so it's like twenty four rips. That's true. I I think two box two hobby boxes are uh, is equal to one jumbo right now. It's like two price price. Yeah, they're jumbos double. I think one eighty versus ninety US. Oh, I'm just looking at my local card shop, and they have hobbies for cheaper. So that's right. Um, yeah, I'm still going with the jumbo. I want that guaranteed auto. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, actually, I've, I've had decent success with Top Series 1. Base. Like, remember last year I got the Ozzy Smith? Ozzy Smith. That was out of Jumbo? No, that was on the Hobby Box. Oh, that was out of Hobby. Right? So, the Ozzy Smith Red, yeah, number 25. Yeah. yeah. So, that was, that was amazing. So, I did have success, but that was extremely lucky too, right? Like, I, I know that doesn't happen often and obviously this year you know everything balanced out with my spencer torkelson game <laughs> relic. now does does uh like those gold foils because gold foils are like jumbo exclusive jumbo exclusive does that play in any factor or that's a non kind of like uh issue uh it's a i think it's a nice bonus but yeah i don't know if it's a huge factor and you know, going back to what you said, well, like, uh, yeah, you can get a clear, but how many clears have you hit? <laughs> you know, like uh, it hit is exactly zero, <laughs> exactly zero. <laughs> Extremely hard, but I guess you know, you you got a shot, you got a chance. But yeah, so I'm I'm playing the odds in this one, and I rather have the jumbo box. Nice. I think uh, for me, I, I I'm gonna go jumbo as well. I just uh, I feel like hobby is. And I, I will say, in previous years, I've had way more success in hobby boxes over jumbo boxes. I think with the guaranteed auto, it's great. You know, two silver packs. I guess you get two silver packs and two two hobbies anyway, so it's the same. Um, I do like silver packs. I think that's a bonus for paper. I don't know if you guys enjoy silver packs, but uh, silver packs one of my favorite um, things to do at the end. Um, but yeah, jumbos... I think for me is is the call just because, you know, the, the, there's hits. There's you see the hits. Whereas hobby, you have to open up multiple packs, and then you know sometimes 
there's nothing for a long time and it's a lot of openings so <laughs> you know i just like going through go, going through it quick you know sorting out get right to the middle pull out the good cards and and you're good <laughs> you know that's the problem with young he keeps like convincing me like to go <laughs> higher and higher like like he got me into ripping HFA boxes. Remember when like it was Bowman Chrome came out with those? Oh, HTAs. Oh no, not HTA. Yeah, they're oh, the best. Oh my god, HTAs that, are that the best. ripping that box is like the highlight of my life. That's like going to a casino, <laughs> and they're like, "Hey, do you want to like? We'll just take you to the high stakes ta- the room." Yeah, man. And it's you're like, great. "Oh my god, I should not be here. I shouldn't be here." And then you just like throw down money it's like i've ripped yeah. so much of those htas that's why oh, because it's i so much fun I, I i just think colors are way better in htas over over just hobby and especially in chrome bowman chrome specifically but yeah <laughs> <laughs> anytime that's, that's you need a, a friend to convince you i got you Wolf. <laughs> yeah, yeah i need to make way more money that's what i have to do <laughs> we all do buddy next <laughs> Well, next thing you know, Will's going to get two jumbo boxes. Forget about two hobby boxes. <laughs> cases. We're just talking about cases. Now. <laughs> That's true. That is actually true. We're talking about cases. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good one. Will, you got to go next? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so before I, I do my pick one, Hyung, what do you think is the best Tiger Woods card? Oh. Ooh. This is, this is, this is. Or what's, a, yeah. What's one of the top? Or auto, auto. auto. We'll go auto. I'll make you it a little easier. You gotta go his SP authentic. There you go. So yeah, my agreed. pick one. Um, so last week we had a lot of fun talking about the Super Bowl and about Mahomes versus Brady and and all that stuff. And now it's like, you know, he's won his third Super Bowl, so he's well on his way to establishing himself as a potential goat along Brady. Uh, so I wanted to compare a couple goats. So Patrick Mahomes, his rookie autographs, uh, prism, gold out of 10. Okay. So there's only 10 of them. It's his 2017 Panini prism rookie autograph uh, out of gold uh, and gold versus Tiger. And I picked Tiger just because like he just launched his uh, new... Uh, clothing line Sunday Red, and he's at the Genesis Open this weekend, and it's his first tournament of 2024. So he's kind of back in the, like he's back in the spotlight. So goat versus goat, Patrick Mahomes, uh, that card versus Tiger's SP Authentic 2001 SP Authentic Gold out of 100 autograph. Auto. Yeah. What, do you have so there's for those. Yeah, yeah. So the last sold on both. So last sold for the Mahomes was August of last year. Sold for let's call it eighty thousand, and Ooh. the Tiger sold in October, like so a couple months after, for seventy five thousand. There are sixteen PSA ten Tiger cards, and for the gold out of ten, there's four four PSA tens. So super low pop, right? Like, ooh, this one's a good one. So goat versus goat, you have just an extra seventy five thousand dollars laying around because you didn't because you didn't rip as many cases as we did. Of I think I think paper. <laughs> I think I think for me, um, PC wise, it would probably be Tiger, but I think a part of me is saying that that Mahomes gold. Like gold is different in football. Like that to me, that's next level, and I think the liquidity of that card over the tiger, uh, Mahomes has tiger beat in that aspect. I think long term, I would like the Tiger Woods because for me, that would be a card that I would realistically keep, like in my collection when I die. That's what I pass along over a Mahomes gold. But if I'm alive, I'm picking the Mahomes gold, uh, Prism Auto. Uh, just because the li- I know the liquidity of that in the right time, the right place, that thing is is worth worth a lot of money. So I'm gonna go Mahomes gold, especially after the mm. Super Bowl win. Yeah, yeah you got to figure that card's <laughs> yeah. gone up way up. Um, I kind of uh, 
I kind of talked about this in the previous episode too, where, and then John thought it was a hot take or he just really disagreed with me, but I'm like, I don't know if golf carts are a thing, you know what I mean? And he's like, no, goats are goats, right? So, goats are goats. Yeah, which, which, which is, yeah, which is fine, right? Which I agree with to a certain degree, but you know, I think, um, because I have that kind of mentality, I'm already going to obviously choose Patrick Mahomes. Uh, and the similar points to what Hyung mentioned, gold prism is, it's, I'm looking at one right now, a card ladder and it's, it looks iconic already, you know, and, and, uh, it's, it's going to be one of, and we're talking about Mahomes too, like, you know, when we we're debating last week, and I think I still chose Brady and I jokingly changed to Mahomes last second, but <laughs> after that Super Bowl, after that Super Bowl win, now that, now that we know what happened. I'm like, oh man, Mahomes could have just a ridiculous career, and that has so much more potential and going even higher than the 75, 80k uh, last sold price. So, yeah, Mahomes for me as well. Interesting, interesting. I I was worried when I shared this that it might be like clean sweep Tiger. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, and so I was gonna oh, wow. be like, you know, like the prism, the Mahomes. It's out of <laughs> no, you don't have to. Ca- it's like, Mahomes. Yeah. Oh, I must be so off base from the rest of the collecting world. But when I look at that Tiger card, I'm just like, that is that is art. It's great. It's just, it's so beautiful. Like it's got that sepia tone, which is not a good look for most cards and most like <laughs> right. like you know, if you're playing around with your camera and you, you change to the sepia filter, it's like <laughs> what are you doing? Like why do you want to look old timey? But right. that tiger card, I don't know, it's just because I, I I love Tiger so much. I love golf. I love playing golf. I love watching golf. Okay. I'm like super hyped about just like him playing this weekend. So I, I'm Tiger. I'm Tiger all the way. I think it's also because <laughs> I don't really like Panini Prism cards. Like, they do, the borders do nothing for me. Just, I'm not a fan. So I'm Tiger. <laughs> I, I remember send, with you send all your hate the... comments to Clark. I don't, I don't need to see him. <laughs> I think John would have picked Tiger too, for sure. Yeah, you guys got to ask yeah, John yeah. next week when he's back on. Yeah. Just be like, yeah. Will needs a little support. He's a little down in the dumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John would have definitely chose Tiger. All right, I liked it though. Okay, let's finish off with my pick one. Okay, we're going to go back to 2024 tops, kind of that uh, uh, theme again. And the I believe still... Um, as of yesterday, the highest selling card from the 2024 Top Series 1 was the insert uh, card of Evan Carter, his 2024 Tops Chrome Series, which was inserted into it, his Superfractor Auto, which was pulled, mm. right? So raw, it sold for $5,000, 500 mm-hmm. all right? So that's the high sale. So raw again. Would you have that card or... His 2020 Bowman Draft, his first Bowman Chrome Auto, Orange Auto, number 25, PSA 10, 7,500. I know I'm going to get and a lot the Topps of heat. Chrome, Topps Chrome Super Fractor Auto, it is a sticker auto. Yeah, I was just going to say it's a sticker auto. Mm, I, I actually yeah. seen that card. Oh, man. Um, one, I'm not, I'm not fully on board with Evan Carter. This is why... Like, I'm going to get a lot of hate. So I wouldn't necessarily be excited with either, to be honest. But obviously, they're massive cards. Um, Super Fractor, obviously, would be a super cool pull. But I didn't like the fact that it was was a sticker auto. The card looked beautiful itself. but um, And it was pulled out of retail, I believe. Um, Yeah, which which is crazy. But I think I'm going to go with the Bowman Chrome Orange uh, PSA 10. I, I just think on Carter Auto, um, and you know, to the true, if Evan Carter does become, you know, a superstar, I think you're gonna have a lot more love with the Bowman um, Chrome over. Uh, I wouldn't say a second tier Superfractor card, but it, like it, I don't know if that's gonna go down as 
his card to get necessarily right where it it might be a secondary or third or fourth type of card where whoa this isn't you know uh this isn't his main card so i would i would say you know bowman chrome first first star king um i would like it if it was probably red over orange but orange would do i guess um so i'm gonna go with the bowman chrome orange all right Mm. Clark, can you can you say which one was the first card? The Evan Carter twenty twenty four Topps Chrome Series One. It was the nineteen eighty nine version, yeah, okay, okay. the thirty fifth anniversary. Got it. Got it. Super Fractor Auto. Yeah, 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 I saw that one. Uh, do you, <laughs> so do you sometimes search for like the most expensive cards that all sold out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just saw that the other day too. Um, you know, for me. I'm I'm always about the picture and I always I usually lean towards tops like tops over Bowman cuz you guys know how much I hate like these photoshopped images of 16-year-olds that look so goofy. <laughs> and so I'm looking at Evan Carter's Bowman Chrome picture and it's like him running around the bases but it's like he just looks I don't know looks like he's trying to give an awkward high five. I don't know. It's not, it's not doing it for me. Uh, okay. But then the 2024, it's, it's a sticker auto. It's the 1989 series. <sighs> you know what? I, I don't like that it's a parallel. Uh, well, not, not a parallel. Insert. What do they call it when it's a different year? Yeah, is it insert? I don't like, I don't like off-year inserts. And I don't like sticker autos, so I'm going to the Bowman Chrome for the first time ever. I'm gonna pick the <laughs> ugly Photoshop. I have a, fe- I have a feeling you're gonna become a Bowman Chrome fan one of these days, like really soon. Oh, no, young, that's the one area where where you you'll never. I bet get me. I, I no, will because, bet you. No, because like when you. have you when have you ever looked at a Bowman Chrome player like card and thought, wow, that image is amazing. Oh You've yeah, nev- right. They're I, so terrible. Oh, I'm not looking so, at the image at all. Exactly. So I get the value. Not not even value. It's like like I look at Mike Trout's Bowman Chrome. It's such an average, vanilla looking like card. <laughs> right. Like yeah. there's nothing yeah. special. But then the the iconicness about that card is just like wow. Same with Soto. Like if I seen a red Soto Bowman Chrome, I would be going nuts because only like yeah. five exists it's just like that's the grail right and it's yeah. like the mantle same thing like over time i think these bowman chromes they, they get very um iconic over time they age well yeah i'm just convinced. not there you're convinced i'm not you're there convinced. no i'm not there because like because i'd rather like i'd rather the tops chrome out of five. like if we're talking let's just say we're talking um like red you know out of five I like the tops version, the tops Chrome versions of these cards, the rookie cards. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Bowman Chrome just doesn't do it for me. It's oh, not. Man. Yeah, it's hurting. Send all, your, right now. send all your hate comments to Clark at Five Card Guys <laughs> and leave leave me out of it. Hey, I thought I thought you said you were uh, ripping these HGA. Uh, cards. Yeah, well, I, that's where he, that's where he, I lost them. Yeah, I guess. That, no, that was just oh, for the, the gambling side of it. Just the, the fun of that. Part. Yeah. It's the fun of gambling. Gotcha. It, it's, it hits you so hard and so quick. It's it's such a rush. <laughs> <laughs> but if All they right, had well, if they had HFAs for Tops Chrome. HTA. Like out, oh, oh, I keep HFA's saying HFA. Home field home field advantage. Advantage. You really if want had... Clark to collect it. <laughs> I'll send, you, I'll send you some pictures <laughs> later of uh, some cool HFAs from this year. Uh, but yeah, if they had HTAs for tops, Chrome, oh my gosh, yeah. I would rip, I would rip so much of that. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be a problem. All right. Well, before I wrap up the show with my pick one, we got there's a lot of fact checking that needs to be done in this episode. So, <laughs> so John, you're going to be real busy. But um, but yeah, I. I I'm going to go with Bowman Chrome. No surprise there. You know, Hyung didn't have to convince me to go to Bowman Chrome. I was always Bowman Chrome too. So 
Um, and you know, the sticker, even if it was an all card auto, I'm not a huge fan of the 35th anniversary cards too. Yeah. Maybe that's why. Yeah. Yeah. The, the design itself looks nice for this year, the 1989 look. Yeah. That's what I, I like about that. it. Yeah. Yeah. But the 35, like the emblem of the 35th anniversary, just not a huge fan. I got a bunch of those in my hobby boxes, the base ones. Yeah. <laughs> right, the 89 base. I'm like, ah. Yeah. Well, go, go. Sorry, time. I have to say this, but Tops needs to do a better job with paper, like Series One, Series Two, autos. Like it, it, it's not even like a, a. You're not even really hoping to hit. I mean, you're hoping to hit the autos, but they're not the really valuable ones. Like the parallels are going to be your your valuable ones, but then they're all insert autos, for instance, or baseball stars autos. That nobody really wants, right? So, and some most of them are sticker autos too. Some of them are uh, on card, though. I think uh, the insert auto. But regardless, yep. I think autos and papers are so weak. So, mm-hmm. just wanted to throw that in there. They need some work. Agreed. Clark, uh, before before we sign off, I think you gotta do a poll. I want to see what people think. Like, do you prefer Topps Chrome or Bowman Chrome? And I just want to see the avalanche of votes. Like first, first Bowman Chrome versus like Topps Chrome, right? Yeah, versus the rookie. Yeah, yeah the Topps oh, Chrome rookie. It's a versus... bloodbath. It'll be a bloodbath. Right? I, I want to see like, <laughs> It'll just be my one vote, like point zero four percent of the poll. Like, Why I, do five car guys even put this poll? But up? I'm kind of curious. Videos. I feel like I feel like you know because there might be a lot of newer collectors. And they might be like, "Well, I don't, I don't understand the appeal of Bowman Chrome, like or I can see the, that. Bowman first, you know." I can so see I'm that. wondering if there's other people who I'll feel. I'll do that for you. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's other people who feel how I feel. I'll do that for you. Well, uh, my caption will be putting up this poll for a friend. Yeah, <laughs> and don't, then we'll see. Don't put my <laughs> socials anywhere out there for anyone to see. I don't need your comments, people. Okay, I won't tag you in it, but. Uh, but well, but yeah, I will say this: I do appreciate all the nice things that people say. You're um, a legend on you know, this episode. Or well, it's so weird, we'll right? It, it really shouldn't be like it, like we're just <laughs> three guys just talking, or four guys just talking. Like, but but you know, there's always some like Clark will always send me little message like messages of like what people have said and stuff. And people are so kind, and you know, and the fact that they listen sure. and that they laugh along with us. Cause like that's what I'm just trying to do. I'm just I think to have fun, I think you could have, have your own time. show where you just just record yourself <laughs> and it's just live with Will. What whatever you're doing, people would watch you. Will the perfect spinoff? Yeah, me trashing <laughs> me trashing hockey cards to a Canadian market. <laughs> me telling baseball collectors they're dumb for collecting I Bowman Chrome. We'll just see it. how quickly I get canceled. <laughs> All the graders hate you. Yeah, yeah all the <laughs> no grading companies will will uh, sponsor me. Yeah, it's like Will's really different on his own show. <laughs> <laughs> but on Cards to the Moon, he seems like a nice guy. <laughs> well, you know, people love you, Will, and uh, we're always happy to have you back. So yeah, I know this won't be the last episode with you on it, but uh, thanks again, Will, for stopping in and. Uh, of course, we thank all our listeners. Uh, what Will says is absolutely true. We get a lot of positive comments about our show, and we appreciate each one of them. And uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll have a brand new one for you uh, in a few days. All right, talk to you then. Bye.
thanks for listening to Cards to the Moon. We'd really appreciate you subscribing to our podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. And you can also connect with each of us on Instagram at 5 Card Guys, or you can follow Hyung at Integrity Sports Cards, or John at Trade You at Recess. You can also check us out at 5CardGuys.com. Thanks again, and hope to connect soon.